Good morning, Bridge Ministry Church. We're glad you're here today. Good morning. Let's stand together. Hey, you know, one of the things that happen in God's church is we sing a lot. I've never been anywhere where I sing at work very much. If I do, they tell me to stop. But isn't it neat that the church is God's culture, God's people singing about God? You know, one of the things we've been learning, we've been having a worship conference here at Bridge, and one of the statements that was made from the scriptures was that we need to worship God in spirit and in truth. And those two statements are very simple. Worshiping God in the spirit means being with God. Be with God. Be with him in his spirit. Secondly, with truth. And that is the best part about what we do each week here at Bridge Ministry Church, is we don't sing about things that are fake or phony. We don't celebrate stuff that breaks people's hearts. We don't sing and speak out about stuff that goes away or disappears. In fact, no matter what language you speak, no matter what country you're from, no matter what you, your experience and background has been, truth never changes. Truth is the same no matter where you're at, on what side of the equator or what language or dialect you might speak. Truth is truth. And that's why we're here. What a great opportunity that we get right now to just use our voices and our bodies, not only to sing in truth, but to learn truth from God's truth called the Bible. So let's pray and let's start singing. Father in heaven, thank you that we get to gather today. We get to be here in your holy name. Jesus, you are great, and we put you at the top of our priority list today. We look to you and only you alone for truth, and we worship you with our voices in any way possible, just use us to glorify you in Jesus' name. Amen. Here we go. Let's sing.
vitamins, the only power that can make us beautiful is Jesus Christ. The only thing, the only source, the only authority is Jesus Christ. There's no other name, no other power, no truth. It's proven. It's historical. All other religions are humans trying to be good enough for heaven. But Jesus said, I love you. I want you. I will save you. You can't save yourself. You can try. And maybe that day you think you'll go to heaven. You don't know if you're there. You don't know if you get in until you get there. That's not God, not the God of the Bible. His promise, you follow Jesus. That's why this table is here. And that's what we celebrate as we worship, even in our tithes and offerings. We give ourselves and we give God the glory. You know, worship really means ascribing glory, credit to the person that deserves all the credit. I didn't do anything. You know what a trophy is? Did you ever get a trophy? You are a trophy. Grace. We just sing, He takes beauty from ashes. He takes our efforts and He says, Let me make you beautiful. That makes you a trophy. So as we give and as we tithe today, we just give back to the Creator of the universe because we love Him and we worship Him. He says, I am the bread, you'll never be hungry. He says, I am the water, you'll never be thirsty. And that's what we're going to do today in this service. So as the ushers come around, you can stand, you can sit down, doesn't matter, you're already standing. Let's stay standing and just sing these words, how great is our God, how great is God. Sing with us. Ushers, you come around. He's our God, sing with me how great He's our God, now see how great, how great He's our God. Let me sing again. Don't be ashamed. How great is our God. How great. How great. How great.
up here, let me ask a question real quick in Portuguese. Tem alguém aqui que veio para culto de em português, mas esqueceu de teve mudança de horário, chegou um pouco cedo. Alguém? Okay, acho que não. Today, today it's a little more difficult because you know Alexa changes automatically, the the clock on our phone changes automatically. You know we got all this stuff that that works automatically. So you know, you, you, actually, what I do now because I still don't have a lot of faith in all this automatic stuff, is I take my, my telephone and I go into the kitchen and see if there's a difference in time on the stove clock and on my phone clock. And I know that, you know, that my, my phone changed. The first church that I worked after I finished my uh, music course, we had a traditional, traditional southern church. We had Sunday school and then we had, I had the worship service. And we had a sister in the church that would not go to Sunday school to save her life. She just, she had nothing to do with Sunday school. She'd be there for the worship service, but she didn't want to go to the Bible study beforehand. And I laughed almost till I cried the day that time changed, like, like today. And there she was at time for Sunday school. She came in already for the worship service, realized she was an hour early. Did she go to Sunday school? No, she didn't. She went and sat in her car until worship service started. She just, she would not go to Sunday school. Even if she was there, she would not go uh, being there one hour early. I want us to talk today about the bread we break. We're coming to the Lord's table again uh, as we do each month. And uh, I have had the opportunity to preach about the Lord's Supper again today. And I want us to focus specifically on the bread. Uh, is there anybody here who doesn't like bread? You know, I know some people, uh, because of health problems today, can't eat bread or they have to get be sure that it's uh, gluten-free bread or things like that. But uh, I think most of us probably like some kind of bread or another. And bread is such a basic thing in our lives. Every culture has its bread. And uh, it, it's so basic that, you know, there have been times that people in prison who were imprisoned, the basic, the minimum that they would give them would be bread and water. You know, you may not get anything else, but you could at least count on the fact that you would have bread and water. Bread is, it, it, it's considered to be one of the most essential, most basic foods that we have around the world. Um, so, you know, even I, I found it interesting while I was studying this week, the word companion, the word companion comes from two Latin words, one com or with and panis, bread. So a companion 
is one who you share your bread, share your rations with. So I thought that was very interesting. And uh, so bread is such an essential part of our, of our lives. And, and you, you see that even more so, you know, living in Brazil, I, I, I was impressed, that at least in Santos, I, I always joked, I said, I had trouble learning my way around Santos because to me, every street almost looked the same because you had two things on every street in Brazil or in Santos. You had a muffler shop, Loja Escapamento, or, and a bakery. They were, you know, it just everywhere you turned around, you had those two things. So it was always kind of a little difficult to make reference because there was a bakery. And uh, the first apartment that the school rented for me that I worked for in Brazil, the first apartment they rented for me was above a bakery. Now, I never had to set an alarm, not because of the noise that they made, but at four or five o'clock in the morning, the smell of the bread coming up into my apartment is what woke me up every morning. So, and then just as soon as I woke up, I did like most good Brazilians would do. This is, you know, this is, I think this is how I became Brazilian. I get up, I go downstairs, I get fresh, hot bread because that's what Brazilians do, you know. That in Brazil, coffee and bread, yes. So, I want us to talk about the bread that we break today. When we are having the Lord's Supper, when we are sharing this meal together, some of the things that the bread is communicating to us and, and understanding really what the bread is all about. And, and the first thing that we need to see, or the first thing that we see is, is that we are going to identify the bread the bread, the scripture, that our scripture today is found in Mark, uh, go back here, I got lost, Mark chapter 4, verse 22, that says, while they were eating, Jesus took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples, saying, take it, this is my body. Now, of course, Jesus was speaking symbolically. We are not cannibals. Although some people in Rome, some people in the Roman society who were ruling the world at that time were telling the Roman citizens that Christians were cannibals because they ate the body of Jesus. You know, that, that was the story that they were spreading about Christians, that they were truly, that they were cannibals because they ate the body of Jesus. Well, this is not literally the body of Jesus. And when Jesus says, take, eat, this is my body, he is making an illustration, a figure for us. But truly, he has told us, and, and John made reference to this earlier during the worship time, we read and Jesus teaches and tells us of himself that he is the bread. In John 6, chapter, uh, verse 32 and verses 35, Jesus said to them, Truly, I tell you, it is not Moses who has given you the bread from heaven, but it is my Father who gives you true bread from heaven. Then Jesus declared, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never grow hungry. And whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. So, Jesus is our bread. He is the bread that feeds us spiritually and gives us life. As bread that we eat gives us physical life, Jesus, who is the true bread, gives us life spiritually, life everlasting. And by eating of this bread and drinking of this cup, we never hunger and we never thirst again. Now, I am I am watching. Uh, I saw this presentation years ago when I was in seminary, and I encourage you to go on YouTube and look up Jews for Jesus, Christ in the Passover. It is a tremendous presentation about the origins of our Lord's Supper. Because this memorial feast that we celebrate monthly comes out of the memorial feast of the Jewish Passover 
service. And if you watch this presentation by Jews for Jesus, it's like, how come Jews don't see this? You know, they, they really present to you and show you how Jesus is our Passover and how he is in the Passover. And they use unleavened bread, a particular type of unleavened bread. We talked about this last time that uh, how bread leaven represents sin. Now, uh, I sent that article to you, but just to let you know, the Eastern Orthodox Church, and we do too, I don't know for the same reason, the Orthodox churches use bread with leaven in their communion services, but their purpose is to uh, symbolize that Jesus has risen from the dead. So, you know, leavened bread, non-leavened bread, and our Lord's Supper services, that's not important. I still like the symbolism of the unleavened bread. But particularly the matzo. This is the bread that's typically, the type of bread that's typically used in the Jewish Passover service. And it shows Jesus. And it's various ways. I'm going to show some of those to you right now. Because if you look at this bread, it's got little holes in it. And it looks like it's, you know, little kind of burnt spots on it. And it reminds us what Isaiah says of the Messiah, but that he was wounded for our transgressions and he was bruised for our iniquities. And as you look at this matzo, you kind of get that idea. You see the little pierced holes like Jesus was pierced in his side while he was hanging on the cross and you see these marks that look like bruises. So it reminds us so much of Jesus Christ. So we see that. We see Jesus there in the bread and reminded of his suffering for us. But another thing about the Jewish Passover service, they use, and I have here, three slices or three pieces of the matzo. And what I understand is that the bottom piece represents mankind or the Jewish people. The top piece represents God the Father. And for the Jewish people, the middle piece represents the priest who is the mediator between God and man. But what does Scripture tell us? Scripture tells us in 1 Timothy verse two, chapter 2 and verse 5 that says, For there is one God and one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. And Hebrews tells us that Jesus is a high priest after the order of Melchizedek. Jesus is our mediator between God and man. So this middle piece for you and me would represent Jesus Christ. And during the supper, they take, very interestingly, they take whoever's leading the meal that night, the middle piece, he breaks it, and then puts it back in the middle. They will wrap it up in cloths. Then someone will take that bread and they will hide it somewhere in the house for later to go looking for that buried bread. And then they will find that buried bread and bring it back, which symbolizes and points to Christ who died, was buried, and rose from the dead, rose from the grave. So there's some beautiful symbolism that comes out of the Passover meal into our Lord's Supper, our sharing. So we have the idea that Christ is the bread. He is that mediator between God and man. And I think, you know, when Jesus teaches his disciples to pray and he tells them to give us this day our daily bread, yes, he is talking about our necessities of life, the fact that if we are going to live, we do need bread. You know, we do need sustenance. But I think it's more than that. Not just our physical needs, but Jesus is truly thinking about our spiritual need. For what greater need do we have than a relationship with Jesus Christ? So we do need daily to live in this world. We do need daily our daily bread, who is the Lord Jesus Christ. 
there is no greater, greater need that we have in our lives that I can see. So we see very much and we are reminded very much that the bread that we break, the bread that we share is our Lord Jesus Christ. He is our bread, the bread of life. Now, again, we, we talk about, you know, the Bible says that he broke the bread. We always think about the bread being broken as representing the fact that Jesus Christ suffered and died on the cross. And it may have a little bit of that, but if you really stop and think about it, if you remember, his body, Christ's body, was actually never broken. The tradition was is when they crucified someone because usually a person suffered and, and would not die immediately on the cross that at a certain period during the day that the soldiers would go and break the prisoner's leg who was on the cross that they could no longer be pushing up to get their breath. And they would die because they would, they, they would not be able to breathe anymore. But the Bible tells us that Jesus actually died on the cross, be, gave up his life on the cross before this point. So Jesus' bones, Jesus' body, his legs were never broken on the cross. So when we talk about breaking, it is not so much that we're talking at this point about Christ's suffering. Although he did give his life, he did give his body for us. But it is the idea of sharing the idea of sharing because, you know, we, we often refer to communion or fellowshipping with others as breaking bread. I do not invite you to my home for a meal and just keep all the meal in front of me. And if I want to share a piece of bread with you, I have to, I have to break it. I have to Make it in part so that I can give you some. So this is what Jesus is talking about when he says broken for you. It's the idea that we share in his body, that we distribute his body among others. It's not referring to his cruel death, but that we, we break it so it can be shared. I don't keep it for myself. He didn't keep his body for himself, but he shared his body. And so it becomes part of our communion. Um, Matthew chapter 16, verses 9 and verse 10, was talking about a, a, a concept that the disciples were, were having trouble gas, grasping, but it gives us a wonderful reminder about sharing. Jesus says, don't you remember the five loaves for the 5,000 and those many baskets fulls you gathered, or the seven loaves for the 4,000, how many baskets fulls you gathered? I, that, that is one miracle I would have loved to see. I would have loved to see, you know, it, it's kind of like, you know, cell replication, those of, uh, those of you who are, are fans of biology. Can you imagine that, you know, Jesus taking a piece of bread, breaking it to put it in a basket, but then right as he breaks it, he still has two, two whole pieces of bread. And he just keeps breaking the bread, but it, it, it's not getting smaller. It's not diminishing, but it's multiplying. I, I just can't, I can't imagine. I just, I just I really, I would just love to see Jesus breaking a piece of bread and having a whole piece of bread in both both hands you know uh, unfortunately we don't get that experience here but we had the idea we had the concept and so by breaking the bread by Christ sharing the bread he's not diminishing himself in any way we're not having less of a relationship because we share Christ with others but truly we are multiplying. We're multiplying Jesus in our lives and in the lives of others as we share Christ with others. An old gospel song from back in my day says, Giving is not subtracting. It's adding, don't you see? What you lose becomes another's gain. Sharing's not dividing. 
It's multiplying life like the flowers after morning rain. So as we share Christ, we are not giving up anything in our lives, but we are multiplying Christ in the lives of others, and it grows. Another old song from a musical said, Life in Christ is a thing that grows and 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 grows. It's a thing that grows. You had to live in the 70s to know that song and be in church. So, the bread is Christ. We break it so that it might be shared with others. And then he says, take and eat. Take and eat. Again, we are not cannibals. We are not committing cannibalism as we share this bread, but we're remembering what Christ has done for us. Now, I hope, I know there are weird people for everything in this world. I would hope that none of you take the bread and the cup and leave here with it and take it home and put it on a shelf somewhere just to look at it. You know, bread is not an item to simply be admired. I don't think any of us, unless you, again, or can't eat, literally can't eat the bread because of celiacs or other, other maladies that you might have, but I don't think I have ever gone into a bakery just to look around and go, oh, what beautiful bread. How nice. I can promise you if my wife is with me, we don't just admire the bread. I, I, I confirmed something with her the other day. I said, because I didn't want to say if it was not true, I asked her, I said, would you prefer a dozen red roses or some loaves of artisanal bread? Forget the roses. She, she wants the bread. I, I, I kid you not, last year on her birthday, I stopped by Whole Foods and brought, bought three loaves, different loaves of artisanal bread and brought home to my wife because my wife loves good bread. And you should have seen the expression on her face when she saw three loaves of bread exclusively for her, you know. That it, she, didn't have, she didn't have to share it with me. She did, but she didn't have to. But you don't, you know, I know you can't take it all, but I don't know any of us who would just go in a bakery and look at the bread and not take something. So, Bread is not simply something to be admired, and Christ is not just something simply for us to look at and admire, but we are to participate in his life and he in our lives. So when we distribute the bread, when we distribute the cup, we don't get them and hold them and just look at them. Now, maybe for a moment, you do, you look at it, and you contemplate what the meaning of the bread is. You contemplate what the meaning of the cup is. But then we continue by eating and drinking. So through this eating and drinking, there's real meaning behind the symbols. Once again in Corinthians chapter 10, verse 16, it says, is not the cup of thanksgiving for which we give thanks a participation in the blood of Christ? When we drink the cup, we are participating in the sacrifice that he gave for you and for me. It's becoming real in our lives as we remember what he did. And is not the bread that we break a participation in the body of Christ. So this distribution, this sharing of the bread is not just remembering what Christ did for us on Calvary, but it's also remembering, reminding us that you and I are now the body of Christ here on this earth. And Christ has brought us together. Have any of you 
How many of you have actually made bread? Crazy thing. When I, at 13, 12, 13 years of age, when I decided I wanted to start learning to cook, and I wanted to cook something, I made bread. Now, what is one of the hardest things you could possibly make? I got my mother's Betty Crocker cookbook. I opened it to the recipe on bread. And those are probably the two best loaves of bread that I've ever made. They turned out perfectly. My first time, they turned out perfectly. But what's in bread? There's flour. There's water. Depends on the type. There may be eggs. There are different ingredients. Now, I will not just pick up a spoonful of flour and eat it. A spoonful of sugar, maybe. But, you know, I will not eat pure yeast. I will not eat uh, pure vegetable shortening. Those things separate, uncooked, are disgusting. But you take all of those things together, and you mix them together, and you press them together, you, you, you knead that dough, and then you put it in the form and put it in the oven and apply the heat to it. And those many different ingredients become one bread. And that's a symbol of what God does with you and me by bringing us into faith in Jesus Christ. We are men and women. We are young and old. We're Brazilians. We're Americans. We're Germans. We're Chinese. We come from different backgrounds. We come from different situations in life. Many of us may be from some very bitter history in our lives. But God brings us together and he forms us because of his life and death on the cross. He forms us into one body and one bread. So this symbolizes how we also become, in a sense, the bread of Christ in this earth for this world to know and to experience Christ. But also, Galatians 2.20 says, I have been crucified with Christ, and it is no longer I, it is not, I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life I live and the body I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. So taking the cup, taking the bread, drinking and eating, is a reminder that Christ is where? He's living in me. And I am, and we are his body in this world to be shared with this world so that they too might come to know the Christ who lives in me and in you. So as we approach the table this morning, let us be very mindful of the significance of the bread. Let's remember not what, but who is the bread. That's so true of most everything in the New Testament Scriptures. We don't have a whole lot of what, but who. The truth is who. The way is who. The life is who. The bread is who. It all points us to Jesus Christ. The bread is our Lord Jesus Christ. Breaking, us, re breaking the bread reminds us of our responsibility to share Christ, to share the bread with those who are hungering and thirsting after righteousness. And finally, by eating the bread, we're reminded that Christ now lives in and through us as we are now his body on the earth. Old gospel song that my mother used to sing regularly at church said, Bread of heaven, feed me till I want. 
no more. Fill my cup, fill it up, and make me whole. So I invite you now to let's continue turning our hearts and our minds to the table of our Lord Jesus Christ. I'll ask those who are going to help me serve. If you would come, join me here. Remembering always, this is table is not of the church, it's not a bridge ministry. But the table is of the Lord. It's made ready for those who love God and for those who want to love God more. So come, you who have much faith and you who have little. You who have been here often and you who have not been here long. You who have tried to follow and you who have failed. Come to the table because it is the Lord who invites you. Apostle Paul reminds us that for I received from the Lord what also I passed on to you. The Lord Jesus on the night that he was betrayed took bread and when he given thanks he broke it and said, this is my body which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Receive the cup and the bread this morning.
Almighty God and Father, we come giving thanks. We thank you for the body of Christ, which was broken for us, which was given for us, that we might participate and have you living in us. We thank you for the blood that was spilled out on the cross of Calvary that washes us and makes us white as snow that we might be able to stand before you clean from all of our sin and transgression. Father, at this moment now, in honor and memory of you, we eat the bread which symbolizes your body. Let us eat together. And in thankfulness, we drink the cup, which represents his blood shed for us. Thanks be to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, in whom we have participation. Amen. You may be seated. Can you please let... Three, two, one! And when those lids come off those boxes, you have never seen such pure joy. This is amazing. As you can see, the children's faces, they're excited as they open up the gifts for the first time. What makes the gifts more than just gifts is the message that comes with the gift. This is the opportunity for a child to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ. The mission of Operation Christmas Child never changes. Children are coming to Jesus, and children are taking the gospel to the ends of the earth. Millions of children around the world are being impacted by these simple shoebox gifts. One box can touch not just a child, but the whole family. So we need to keep packing those boxes and pray for the children that God will use this in a very special way. So thank you for being a part of it. God bless you. It's the time of the 
the year again. It's the best time of the year, the shoebox time. This is wonderful. Our church has been doing this since 2000. That's a long time. And it's a pleasure that we give. We give with a heart. And we give to those in need. If you have never participated, here's the tip. There are boxes in the back. Grab one, two, three. Whenever, you know, let's say if you have three kids, you know, get three boxes so you can do a project with your family. Go to a store. Get one, one toy, like a wow toy. This is like, you know, something that's going to really make a child happy. Those, those gifts are supposed to be new because we don't want to give something old and disappointing. Uh, then you fill this up with, you know, toothbrush, um, um, let's say hygiene stuff, uh, school supplies, things like that, until you make sure that the box is totally full. Then on the 20th, you're going to have, you're gonna have the opportunity to bring it here so we actually can put it all together and take to the processing center. Um, today is the first day we're starting it out. We only have 300 bucks for this congregation, so make sure you take the ones you need today. If we run out, or if you, let's say you buy more stuff than you have boxes for, you can always get those boxes from the dollar store, the clear ones, because your box can also be a gift. Um, I hope everyone participates. Last year, we gave over 500 bucks, you know, our church alone. So we want to make sure that this year we break our record, okay? So questions at the end. I'll be outside uh, at the table answering questions. Make, it sh make sure you don't leave without your box today. And we'll be talking more about it this coming Sunday. Next Sunday is our collection day. Thank you so much for coming. Pastor Gary, thank you so much for your message. There you are. Thank you for explaining the bread, and it was very meaningful to me. I appreciate it. And after that, taking the supper all together, that was amazing. So God bless you. Have a great week. Thank you so much for coming. Next week, let's bring more people. It's, you know, a great way to start the day and seeing all of you here today. Amazing. Thank you so much. God bless you. Pode pegar duas, três, quatro, tanto.